<coughs> Hello there, darlings. Forgive me for <coughs> beginning with a cough, but hey, that's life. Have you ever been scared? I mean, really scared by three little words? Do you think that the three little words is I love you? Ah, that's nothing. That doesn't scare me. I have fallen in love, out of love, in between love. You know, it's just part of it all. That really doesn't scare me. I don't think. <laughs> I haven't thought about that a lot right now. But one thing I have been experiencing, and that has brought me up short, with how frightened those of us who like to have things in order, those of us who like to think we have control. Oh, baby, we like to think that everything is all lined up and that we can control it and we know what's going to happen. Oh, baby, what baloney. Those three words, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know how to do this. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know if I'm on purpose. I don't know if I can actually do this or not. All of this is terrifying to me. And when I get terrified, I either try to work three times as hard and then it really gets balled up and it really doesn't work. Or what I am learning now is to become neutral, neutral and quiet. And sit, really difficult, sit in the discomfort. Now, why on earth would you want to sit in the discomfort? You want to sit in the discomfort because you don't know what it is that you should be doing. I'm going to change something. Wait a minute. Butter has been fooling around with lights, haven't you, Butter? Haven't you? Butter has been fooling around with lights, and um, he changes settings. So I hope you like this setting better. But... If you didn't, it's Butter's fault. It's all Butter's fault. So what, I, what do I mean by sitting in the discomfort? Is when you sit in the discomfort of not knowing, you are allowing something important to happen. You're allowing, especially if you have the courage to become still, you're allowing your guides, your angels, your intuition, whatever you want to call it. I don't care if you call it pizza. You're allowing that guidance that goes beyond your brain. It's higher than your brain. You're allowing that to happen. And I have been so uncomfortable in this past week so uncomfortable because I had worked very hard at fitting myself in a smaller box, a box that was more handleable by others, something that was not too intense, not too, intensity is a good word for it something that is a little more circumspect. Now, do you think a word like circumspect suits me? As they say in Italian, it doesn't. It doesn't suit me at all. So when I realized that I had put these artificial boundaries in the way to try and curtail or control my expansive energy, my lust for beauty. 
So I sat with the discomfort and I squirmed a lot and I wrote a lot and I meditated a lot. And that was difficult because my mind was shooting off in 10 directions. So what I advise you to do is to sit in the discomfort, to be as uncomfortable as you need to be, and don't chide yourself. That's a time for you to be kind, to be kinder than you normally would be, because you realize a lot of us are a lot kinder to other people, but not to ourselves. So instead say, oh, sweetheart, I know, I know you're all uncomfortable right now. It's okay. Sit in the discomfort. Get the messages from your brain, from the universe, from your angels, from your intuition. And start asking why. And start looking elsewhere, not on the path that you're on right now. Start looking over there in the trees. Start looking over there on the shore. Start looking at the formations of clouds. Start listening to snippets of conversation. Open your ears, open your eyes, open your heart and open your mind. And get rid of, I ought to, I should, I really need to, Leave those alone and see what rises. You might be surprised. You might be surprised by what comes up and bops you in the nose and says, look at me. What do you think? So all my discomfort allowed me to become still enough to listen to a conversation with a coach that my intellect was not sure was bringing me any closer to what I wanted. And I consciously said to myself, Adria, stop, stop trying to control this. Stop trying to make this be anything other than what it is. Just let it in. Let it in. And the most amazing thing happened. Although, can I give you five key things that I learned from that session? Maybe not. But... I became permeable. You know that water can pass through, that ideas can pass through. And so I said, wait a minute. If I, 20 years ago, was working on a project that I called Take Off the Mask and Discover Yourself, 20 years ago, I did nothing with it. I designed a logo and I wrote this tagline. And when I found this piece of paper, I went, hmm. And it had theatrical masks against a sun, a radiant sun. And that was the logo. I'd even designed a logo for it. And I thought, how interesting. When I was in a class with a group, of people. What came to me, I have a passion for authenticity, for taking off the mask indeed, because I spent, and I think I said this to you last week, I spent the whole first half of my life putting on masks. Now the second half of my life, not only am I learning to remove masks, but I'm teaching how to remove masks because the most magnificent thing that you could possibly be is you because there's no one else like you. Just like your palm prints may change, 
your fingerprints, luckily for the FBI, don't change. The uniqueness of you, your soul print, is every bit as unique as your fingerprints. So if you allow what is calling to you, and perhaps you may have to go back in some old papers, perhaps you may go and look at something that you haven't looked at in a while, or talk to a friend that you haven't talked to in a while, and something gets triggered. Well, I kept being bothered by this word alchemy and saying, what am I going to do with the word alchemy? I don't know. I'm supposed to do something with it. And it was just in my head and bothering me. And all of a sudden, what came to me is I'm the alchemist of authenticity. Now, alchemy, as you know, is taking something that is lead. This is what 15th, 16th century lead. And they tried with chemicals and all sorts of processes to turn lead into gold. Well, I realize where the gold is. The gold is in removing the masks that we wear and revealing first to us who we are. Because as I said, there is nobody else on the earth that is a replica, an exact replica of who you are. Your unique experiences, your genealogy, your hereditary traits, your societal brainwashing, if you will, all of these things shape us into who we are. And that is a completely unique being. So when you remove the persona, the image that we project, and we get to the essence of who we are, it's exciting. It's exciting. And it allows you to begin to touch the uniqueness and the value of who you are. And when you make contact with that value, what happens is your confidence rises. Because as I've told you before, I can give you a vat of skills on presentation. Of course, I spent half my life doing that. And then I've spent almost another two decades teaching it. So I know it from all angles. I'm a master of presentation. But the hardest thing I've had to master has been to respect and love who I am. That requires the mastery of a lifetime. So last night, being uncomfortable all week with the, I don't know, I don't know, what am I going to do with this? What am I supposed to do? How do I go deeper? The result is speak out, be seen, and lead. How do I get there? And what has the word alchemy got to do with that? Well, last night, I designed a little meme, and I'm going to put it underneath this video. I'd love to see what you guys think of it. How does it strike you? I'm very curious. But all I can say is you have to go through the discomfort. And it wasn't until about 9 o'clock, or maybe it was 8 o'clock last night, that all of a sudden I decided to take that word mask and alchemy and start combining them. And I said, wait a minute. Italia, Venezia, they're all very special to me. Venice and Italy, and I'm half Italian. So let me start exploring. 
and you'll see what leapt out of those connections. So for all of you, whether or not what leapt out of me appeals to you or doesn't appeal to you is not, not the, the purpose of this discussion. It's that if you allow yourself to be uncomfortable with a complete lack of control about knowing how you are going to create something, what it is you're supposed to be doing, when I don't know is driving you crazy, sit in the discomfort and allow yourself, give yourself the miraculous opportunity of being inspired. And you never know what might leap out of that void. Trust your intuition and develop it. It is vitally important for us all, not just as humans, but as business women as well, as professionals as well, as humans. All right. So I don't know is very uncomfortable. But embrace that comfort and take it, that discomfort, and take it to your heart and say, I see you. You're making me crazy. But I am going to sit here and feel it. And let's see what your imagination gives birth to. Who knows? Could be something marvelous. All right. That's it for today. I'm going to put my little meme beneath this. And I love your comments. And I'd love you to tell me what makes you uncomfortable. Oh, I don't know those three words make me uncomfortable. All right, darlings, well, welcome to the world of discomfort and comfort. And I love you. <laughs> Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next week, okay? But right below this video, tell me what you think, not just of the mean. Share something with me, a moment of discomfort and what was the a little click that happens when you embrace the discomfort. Let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Bye. Butter, get yourself out of my way so I can see what I'm doing. Butter is looking at the camera. He's obviously fascinated. <laughs>